Привет! Hello, Russian learners! У меня есть урок для вас. У вас есть лайк для меня. Лайк like за урок. So today we are going to learn everything about these two prepositions. What the ideas are behind them, what the difference is between them, what you need to do with the words following them, and how to use them in questions. Are you ready? Let's achieve it! So before we get to the actual difference between для and за, let's talk about what a preposition is in general. So a preposition is a little word that describes a particular situation, a particular case. For example, when you say you are beautiful, that's one situation, one case. When you say this is for you, you used the preposition for, and that puts you in a different situation, in a different case, different from you are beautiful. So every preposition in every language has a particular idea behind it. These ideas may be different and, well, one preposition in English, for example, can have multiple ideas behind it. But in Russian, these ideas are separated. And for each meaning, for each idea, we have a separate preposition. This is what we actually have with the prepositions для and за. Both of them are translated as for into English. But in Russian, it's two words. So, before we actually look at the difference, let's look at this chart. Here we have pronouns, personal pronouns, and their forms that follow these prepositions. In Russian, when we use prepositions, we also change the words that follow them. So a preposition changes, it influences the word that follows. A pronoun or a noun. First, we will talk about pronouns used after these prepositions. Then we will practice masculine and feminine animate nouns. Let's look at ya, for example. Ya is the basic form. We also call it the subject form or the dictionary form because you can find it in a dictionary. This is the very basic form of the pronoun I, я. For example, я работаю, I am working. So I am the subject, I am doing something. But when we say for me, it will be для меня or за меня. We'll discuss the difference in a moment, but look at this form. It's different. Меня is different from я because we put я after these prepositions and their influence, their power changed the preposition, um, the pronoun я into меня. We have this for each personal pronoun. So now let's take a look at some examples. And let's look at the difference between для and за. So what are the ideas behind them? У меня есть подарок для тебя. I have a present for you. Для тебя. So when you have a present for somebody, that's a present. You don't, you don't demand anything in return. When you give a present, that's one, one direction. It goes from you to this person. And it's selfless, or you can, you can call it a selfless action. You just give something to somebody and you don't expect anything in return. Next example. Обычно я Плачу за нее в кафе. Плачу, I pay, я плачу за нее, for her. So here we have the verb to pay. And with this verb, 
we always use the preposition za, which also means for, but it's not a selfless kind of for. When you pay for somebody, maybe you don't expect anything in return right away, or you don't expect anything at all. But the situation itself, the objective reality tells you that, well, you two had lunch and you two had something to eat and objectively both of you should pay for the meal. You pay for your own meal, your friend or your girlfriend, if this is your girlfriend, Zanyo, pays for her own meal. And there should be kind of a balance. So both sides should pay for their own meal, objectively. However, normally in Russia, men pay for women when having lunch or dinner in the cafe. Why do we use this verb, платить, with за only? You can say also, я заплачу за тебя. You can say it to your friend, I will pay for you. Why does it go with за only? Because even if you don't expect your friend to pay you back, the situation itself tells you that it's kind of a broken balance. So you both did something, you both had meals in the restaurant, and there is kind of a debt. But you take on the biggest part of this debt. So you kind of break the balance here. And the situation expects the other person to give you something in return. Maybe it will be just a word, спасибо, but it should be something. You say to your friend, я заплачу за тебя, and he or she says, спасибо. So at least спасибо should be said in this case. So за is always kind of exchange. You do something and you get something in exchange. It's not always money or something material. It can be just gratitude or very good emotions on the part of this person. So, платить, to pay, is always used with за. You can never say платить для, because для is, it doesn't require the reciprocal action. It requires nothing. Я сделаю это для тебя. It's just, I'll do it for you. I don't expect anything. But this one, я поработаю за тебя завтра. Again, it's kind of a debt. <laughs> uh, the work, it should be done. It should be done by this person, your colleague. But if he or she can't do it tomorrow, you do it for them. So you, again, you break the balance. You do more work than you should. And the situation, the reality tells you that it should be something in return. And in this case, of course, both of you feel it. Your colleague feels that they should, they should reimburse you somehow for this. Maybe next time they will work for you. They will do a shift for you or they will compensate it in some other way. So it's very subtle. Because you may say, well, I don't expect anything at all from this person. But at least, at least you should remember that this is, this is kind of a focus of your, of your vision, of your language, language vision. The reality demands some, some reimbursement, some reciprocal action. And when it does require it, we use za. When it doesn't, so you do it just out of your your own feelings. You want to please this person. You want to give them a present. You want to do something for them. So it's your intention. There is no, there is no requirement on the part of the situation. Then you use dilya. So this was za and dilya with the pronouns. So you can copy this chart and actually it will be in the description so you can download it. 
Here we have the same form after для and after за. And pay attention to the question. Для кого and за кого. So when we ask a question, we will use this. And let's see how we do it. Для кого цветы? Для вас. For example, you decided to do something nice for your mother-in-law and you bought her flowers. So she's asking you, для кого цветы? Для вас. Normally, we would talk formally to our parents-in-law. That is why we will use вас here, the formal you. And in English, normal question will be, who are the flowers for? So you will put the preposition at the end in the question. But in Russian, the preposition always precedes the noun or pronoun or the word that is used instead of a noun or pronoun. So для вас, and in the question it's also для кого. So they are like, like this. They are connected to each other. Next example. Для кого ты это делаешь? Она тебя не ценит. For example, your friend may say this about your girlfriend, if you have a girlfriend. And she, you do a lot for her, but she doesn't appreciate it. Для кого ты это делаешь? It's like a rhetorical question. So, who is she? What is so special about her? So, you should do so much for her. She doesn't appreciate any of this. The third one. За кого вы платите? За него. For example, you are on a bus with your friend and conductor in Russian. It's a person who collects money for the ride on the bus. So, conductor asks you, you pass the money to her and she asks you, well, who are you paying for? Who is this money for? За него. You can point to your friend and say, well, I'm paying for him and for me. I'm paying for both of us. Very good. This was the usage of для and за with personal pronouns. Now let's see how they are used with nouns, masculine and feminine animate nouns. So what happens to nouns when they follow the prepositions для and за? Let's take a look at masculine and feminine animate nouns. So nouns that denote male persons, masculine animate nouns, change their ending when they follow these prepositions. So брат, the subject form, для брата and за брата. Иван, для Ивана, за Ивана. Игорь, soft sign, для Игоря, за Игоря. Since it's a soft ending, we will change it to я rather than а. So these are masculine animate nouns. And just like male persons, they are consistent here. They are solid, substantial, and they are predictable. Because with both prepositions, they acquire same ending. А or я. What about feminine animate nouns? Just like female persons, they are not so easy to manage, they are inconsistent, capricious in a way, because they cause a little bit of a problem for learners. They have different endings. After для, they have one ending, and after за, another ending. So let's take a look. Сестра для сестры, but за сестру. Катя, a name, для Кати, soft ending, я, 
soft ending i. Za, ka, ju. Again, ju is a soft variant. Babushka, grandmother. Dla babushki. Well, here we have k, which never goes with u. So we cannot say k, babushki. We say babushki. And za babush ku. So you should remember this about feminine nouns. They always have more different endings than masculine nouns. Just a peculiarity, of course, I'm joking about female persons here. It's a stereotype, but uh, every stereotype has some basis, right? It has some ground. So I don't mean that all females are this, but many of them. So these are the endings that we use for animate nouns after the prepositions dla and za. Let's take a look at the examples. Алло, привет, ты где? В магазине покупаю одежду для сына. So, алло, this is the word that we use only when speaking on the phone. Привет is a greeting. Ты где? В магазине покупаю одежду для сына. So, I'm buying clothes for my son. I'm not expecting anything in return, right? I'm just buying it for him. Number two, сегодня Иван играет за Игоря. So if, for example, Igor is ill today, Ivan replaces him during the match. Ivan plays for Igor. He fills in for him. We use за because it's Exchange. There's something unequal in this situation, and maybe Igor will compensate it somehow to Ivan later. Number three, я хочу извиниться за Катю. So I want to apologize for Katya. Maybe Katya is my little sister or my daughter or I don't know. For some reason, she cannot apologize herself. She should apologize in this situation, but I'm taking this responsibility because I'm a parent or an older sister or somebody. So I take this responsibility for her. I'm doing it for her instead of her, basically. У нас есть задание для Кати. So, we have a task for Katya. Yes, we can use the preposition для not only with some pleasant things like подарок, present, or сюрприз, or цветы, flowers, but also it can be задание, something that will require some effort on her part, but still it's, it's a good thing for her. We are doing it for her selflessly. We want to help her or to teach her something. Something like that. Very good. And now, у меня есть задание для вас. I have an exercise, a task for you. Look at these sentences and modify the words in the brackets so that they fit into the sentence correctly. Use the prepositions для and за and the correct ending. So the first sentence, imagine that you are going on an excursion with your classmates, you are at school and you all are going on an excursion and your friends, John and Maria, asked you to pay for them. Well, they actually gave you the money so that you go to the person who organizes the excursion and you pass this money to him or her. And this person is asking you, who are you paying for? Who is this money for? For John and Maria. So, pause the video, think for a moment, and fill in the blanks. I hope you've done that, and now the correct answer.
за кого вы платите? За Джона и Марию. Number two. Who is the cake for? For mom. Для кого торт? Для мамы. Number three. One of your co-workers is surprised that you're working today since it should be your day off, but you're filling in for Ivan. Ты сегодня работаешь? Да. Я сегодня за Ивана. Pay attention that here it's not necessary to actually say работаю, to use the verb. We can just say я за Ивана. And it's clear that you are filling in for him, for Ivan. And the fourth one, two friends in a store. Who are you buying so much caviar for? Why are you buying so much caviar? For my wife, she's pregnant and wants caviar. Для кого ты покупаешь так много икры? Для кого ты покупаешь так много икры? Для жены. Она беременна и хочет икру. I hope you've done that. Please also put your answers in the comment section to practice more and to review what you did. And now let's move on to some handy phrases with za. The preposition za is also used in situations where you feel some emotions that the other person should feel, should experience in this situation. Just like when we were talking about paying for somebody, this person should pay, if everything is equal, this person should pay for, for the meal or for something else. But you pay for this person. The same context, the same idea lies behind such phrases as Я рад or Я рада за тебя or за Was. So I'm happy for you. In this situation, I feel happiness. I feel joy because you did something. You did it and you should experience happiness. But I also experience it as if I was in your place, in your situation. You may experience happiness or you may not experience happiness in this situation. It doesn't matter. I'm still feeling this. I'm still happy. Even if you're not happy, I can be happy. And this phrase, just like in English, can be used with a sarcastic meaning. Я рад за тебя. For example, two co-workers in a store, two salespeople and competitors, and one goes on a break, for example, to get coffee or to the bathroom, and at this time, Rich customer comes to the store and the other competitor sells something, something big to this customer. And when the first, the first salesperson comes back, he realizes that he missed an opportunity to get some money. And he can say with a sarcastic meaning, well, я рад за тебя, I'm happy for you, my co-worker, but in fact, of course, he's not happy. So we can use this phrase in such a situation as well. Number two. Я волнуюсь за тебя, за вас. Or я боюсь за тебя, за вас. Я переживаю за тебя, за вас. So these verbs mean I worry, волнуюсь, or I fear, боюсь, or I'm concerned переживаю about you. In English, you will say about you, but in Russian, it's за. It's for, because 
there is a situation where you should be worrying. I don't know, some potentially dangerous situation. You should be worrying. You may be worrying, but it may be so that you're not worrying, but I'm worrying for you. I'm feeling something that you should be feeling in this situation. Number three. Мне стыдно за тебя or за вас. So this phrase, normally it is said by parents who are embarrassed for their kids' behavior. Мне стыдно. Here we have an interesting construction. Literally, to me, it's embarrassing or shameful. Мне стыдно. Again, the child can be okay about something that he or she did, but the parents may be ashamed, may be embarrassed. Number four. Я хочу выпить за тебя или за вас. So this phrase, normally people say it when they make a toast, they drink for someone, for their health, or just to acknowledge their success, to acknowledge that this person is a wonderful person. So we say repeat za. In this situation, I don't know why we say repeat za. Perhaps such situation implies that the person should drink for themselves, but we share this feeling, this joy. That is why we also drink. I hope you are not a fan of alcohol because alcohol can actually be bad for your language learning. If you didn't know, you lose your brain cells when you drink. Every time you drink alcohol, you lose your brain cells. And eventually, <laughs> you can lose some connections that you made in your brain when you learn a new language. So, I hope <laughs> you don't do that. And actually, when you are in a situation that demands you to have a drink, to have alcohol. For example, you are in Russia and you are in a company where people drink, but you don't want to drink. You can still say this phrase, but you can raise a glass with a juice or mineral water, anything. Because this phrase is just an acknowledgement of other person's great characteristics or other person's achievements. Uh, you just appreciate this person and you can do it with any drink. And if people around you are understanding, they will not insist on you drinking because people who insist, they actually don't respect you and your views on alcohol, on all of that. And if they don't respect you, why should you be friends with them? That's just my opinion. If they insist on you drinking, you, it's better for you to think about it. Who these people are and do they actually want to be your friends? So it's okay to use this phrase and drink something non-alcoholic. And number five, of course, uh, we use za when we use this verb. Ya galasuyu. За Владимира Путина. And you remember, we change the name Vladimir Putin to Vladimira Putina because of the preposition за. It's logical. I give my vote for this person's success. Or you can simply say Я за Путина. For his successful campaign as president. Я за Путина. Just so you know, я за Путина. So I support Vladimir Putin. Let me know what you think about him, by the way. Very good. So this was the first part of the lesson on four in Russian. There will be the second part where we will practice asking and answering questions about inanimate nouns used with the preposition, with the prepositions для and за. So we will practice this 
it's very important for your brain to be able to ask and answer questions because as I already told you in my previous videos, in Russian, if you know the question word, you know the answer form. So they fit together like a key and a lock. So the more you practice, the more connections you have in your brain, the better you understand the language, the better your network for this language works. So watch the second part. By the way, in the second part, we will also look at other translations for the preposition for. So watch it next Saturday. Put your own examples in the comments below. Your own examples with the prepositions для and za. Use the information that you've learned today. You can do the exercise one more time. You can type it. It will be good practice. And of course, book lessons at our school. We'll see each other next time. See you then. Пока-пока.